Hello, Abutas from around the world. My name is Kais, and I'm 11 years old, and I live in Montreal, Canada. Welcome to our Abut Zoom session, where me and my co-host, Nyla, who is 9 years old and currently lives in Maryland in the United States, will be interviewing our guest change maker, Lana Slagmoller, who is also based in Maryland. Lana is a senior vice president at Search for Common Ground. She is a peace builder with a media and arts background. Through her work, she focuses on developing innovative programming to transform the way people deal with conflict. Lana's work contributes to several sustainable development goals, especially to SDG number 16, Peace and Justice, Strong Institutions. Myla and I will be asking questions to Lena about her background, her journey, her work, her skills, and her impact. We hope that you will enjoy this session, and I will now be handing you over to Myla to ask the first question. Okay, so my first question is, how did COVID impact your life? Well, thanks, Myla, and thanks, Heis. I'm really happy to be on Obut. This is exciting for me. Um, you know, one of the things that um, I was doing before COVID was spending a med much of my time traveling around the world to places where people are dying because of conflict and helping my colleagues to be able to find ways to deal with that conflict without violence. And so I would leave Maryland and I would go to Niger or Pakistan or Lebanon or Congo and I would work with my teams. And then I would come back for a few days and then I'd go back on a plane and spend more and more time with them. And since COVID, I haven't been able to do that anymore. And so my work has been able, has been disrupted and I've had to do all of that coaching and engagement and helping other people through the computer in conversations just like the one that we're having. Um, I would say the other thing that's changed is that I spent a lot more time with my family because I'm not um, out of the house and out of the country. So I've gotten to know and experience many more things with my family also because of COVID. Okay, so my second question is, what was your favorite time um, during search? Oh, there's so many to choose from. You know, at Search for Common Ground, I've, I've chosen to stay at this organization which builds peace in the world for 19 years. That's kind of longer than both of you have been alive and I've been working for the same organization. And I think it's because there's so many things that I love about it. You know, and I think the things, one of the things that really makes me proud is when I see people who are able to come back into a relationship of trust and respect after they've been killing each other, after they've been supporting violence against each other. And I've seen that in so, so many times. Um, you know, I can remember in one place, um, you know, in Burundi, where I lived for a while, because I lived in Africa for about 21 years, I remember um, being with people who felt as though they had gotten to a place where they were ready to forgive, and they had felt that the truth had set them free, and they were ready to begin respecting their neighbors, even though horrible, horrible things had happened and people had died in their community. Thank you. I'd also like to point out one thing. Hi, her name is Lena. Okay. Now, my third question is, um, what do you like about search and what do you think they could improve, search could improve? Well, you know, we, at Search for Common Ground is the largest organization that only builds peace. Many other organizations do that and also other things that contribute to the sustainable development goals. But the reality is that, you know, even this morning, someone in Congo, which is the country that you're from, Myla, sent me photos of someone who had been hacked to death with a machete. And it was a horrible photo for me to see on this beautiful day where we're celebrating so many things together as a family, but I realized that there are still people who are losing their lives every day because of violent conflict. 
because we're unable to find ways to deal with each other and not say that, you know, the only way I can get what I want is by killing this next person. So for me, every day that someone loses their lives, it means that search needs to do better. And I think some of the things that we struggle with are that some people make a lot of money when there's wars. You know, there's, there's companies that make guns and weapons. And those companies don't always want for there to be peace because then they might lose money, you know? So there's sometimes things that are really hard with us and trying to really be proud and say, we've done the job and the world is fully peaceful. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied until not one more person loses their life because of conflict. Thank you. And my last question is like, what does it mean to create peace in your way? You know, that's a great question, Myla. And I think that's the reason why I've stayed doing what I'm doing for so long. You know, I, uh, when I was young, Ger, I, um, you know, always wanted a world where everyone's right was protected and where there was justice and people were treated equally. And as I grew up, I could see that it was war that was really preventing people from going to get a good education or being healthy or being able to be safe when something bad happened. And so, you know, it made me feel like what we really need in the world is a way to stop conflict from being violent so that people can live safely and when we say that we're building peace what we're trying to do is find ways for people to understand each other to feel safe to dialogue to listen to each other's needs and to find a way that what everybody wants and needs can be achieved and that we don't only have to see the other person as an enemy but also as a friend or as an ally, you know, we all have the same needs as human beings. And so if we can figure out how to work together better and collaborate, that's really where building peace starts. Okay, thank you. And I'd like to pass it over to Heis for a couple of questions. All right, so my first question is, is how many like conflicts have you dealt with? Uh, so we've been we've been working probably in about almost fifty countries around the world. Um, I have visited about eighty two countries, so I have visited almost all of the countries where a Search for Common Ground has been working, and that's been mainly in Africa, maybe about you know fifteen to twenty countries there across the Middle East and North Africa, in Asia. So these are, these are the kinds of countries that I've visited and I've worked with people to help them deal with conflict. All right, so uh, what is your favorite part about your work? I think the favorite part is that I always see that things can change. You know, sometimes when you wake up and you read the news, or you see this horrible thing that I saw on my phone today, you lose hope and you feel as though, my God, this world is just falling apart. But the work that I do, it's constantly like shining a flashlight on these glimmers of hope and people who can change. You know, before COVID, I remember one of my last trips was to Nigeria, where I met people like kids your age who had been forced to join this rebel group called Boko Haram. And they'd been freed from that group and now they were back at school or they were learning some small um, things like how to repair cars and stuff like that. And I could see in their eyes that they had their whole future ahead of them, where by just a few months before, they thought maybe this is it. I just have to be a rebel fighter for the rest of my life. And I see so many places where things radically change in quite a short period of time. And that gives me hope and that's the best part. Okay. Mm. Why did you want to be in Search for Common Ground? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, what I was saying to Myla earlier, I always wanted to be, you know, seeing a world where everyone was treated equally, where everyone's rights were protected, where there was fairness. And I could see that 
the reason why this wasn't happening was because there wasn't peace. You know, when you really understand what peace is, it's that ability to feel safe and to feel as though, you know, you're not being discriminated just because of who you are or what your name is or what tribe you're from, that, you know, you've got just as much chance as anybody to be able to achieve what you want to achieve. And the more I began to see that that wasn't the case in so many places in the world, I wanted to be part of it. And uh, one of my first jobs was being a journalist. And I realized that, you know, you can be a journalist in a way that like tells everybody how horrible the world is. But you can also produce all kinds of cool TV shows or radio shows where you help people to actually understand, hey, you know that other person who you thought was your enemy? They're not so bad. They could be your friend. Sometimes I used to um, write drama, like uh, television and radio drama, telling stories about people who used to be enemies and how they became friends again. And, and that work was super exciting to me too. All right, so uh, how is your arts and media background like connected to Search for Common Ground? Well, that was a great follow-up question, Heis, because effectively before I joined Search, I had been a journalist. I um, had gone to South Africa, which had experienced a big in unjust system called apartheid which made blacks and whites treated very, very unequally. And I went there as a journalist. And, um, and, and I also had, al had fallen in love with African culture and African music and percussion. So while I was a journalist, I also became a percussionist playing music on stage. So during the day, I would write stories and in the evening, I'd be rehearsing with my band. And those two passions had really grown up in me before I joined Search for Common Ground. And what I did, I realized that, oh my gosh, if you want to make peace in the world, you don't just teach people stuff. It's not like a class. You actually have to get people to feel things. And arts is the way to touch people's hearts. And journalism and media can raise awareness and touch people's minds. And the two of them, can be transformative. And so I found my place in search and realized that peace building isn't just a, you know, like a study research kind of thing. It's about people and arts and media really is about people. All right. So I have one last question for you. And it is, do you have any advice for somebody who wants to become a peace builder? Great, Ice, and I think both of you uh, have potential to be great peace builders. But you know, in reality, the first thing, I'd say two things. The first thing is that you can be a peace builder in your own life, everywhere and anytime. You know, it's really about being able to, when you see some conflict, when you see two people who are not getting along or who seem to be getting in a fight over something that they both think they deserve more than the other, you can come in and start to ask questions and you can help them to trust each other. And as you begin to help them to understand each other, well, that's, that's it, you're building peace. So even uh, with when violence isn't being used, a lot of times conflicts require peace building. You know? And the second thing I would say is that there's a lot of um, ways that you can learn things that can help you to become a good peace builder. So you can learn things about cultures, you can learn things about history. You can learn things about um, psychology. And those are some of the interesting um, subjects that you can learn about so that you can better understand why do people make certain choices? What makes them trust somebody and not? And some of those questions that you might be curious about, if you study them more, it can put you on a pathway to be a peace builder. All right. So, Alice, Myla, have you, heard, have you thought of another question? No, I haven't, so I think that'll be it. So thank you, Lena and Myla, for the great discussion and for everything that we learned today. Thank you, Ubutis, for listening to this interview. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can hear about upcoming sessions with other change makers. Please also tell your friends about Ubut and share our social media links with them. Last but not least, go to www.abut.co to learn about opportunities to collect digital badges and help us draw down carbon.